Yo guys, what's up? It's Alex from Jim G Studio. Today we will add Factory as dependency injection framework. First of all, we will open the terminal and write twist edit. Now we will go into our manifest and into our project file. Now we will add a package to the packages array and the URL is the URL to the factory package. I will link it for you in the description. And the version is the exact version, which is 2.2.0. And then in the iOS target, two dependencies, we will add package and the product is factory. We are not using this dependency manager here because they make projects out of these packages for better caching, but I don't like it. I want to use Apple's native Swift package manager and this is why I don't use it. If you want to use it, you can try it, but yeah, I don't like it. Now we will go back to our terminal and write twist generate. Now twist is also fetching the dependency, so it takes a bit longer, but it was quite fast. Now you can see factory in the package dependencies. And we will add the factory dependency in the onboarding package as well, because we need it here. We will add package the URL to the factory package again. And the exact version is again 2.2.0. And now we want to add factory as dependency into our targets. Now you see that I will add factory and onboarding, onboarding UI, onboarding domain, etc. Maybe in one of the next videos I will create a package dependency helper or something like this. So our packages and our project doesn't even know which dependency injection framework we are using. Let's see. And Xcode is doing Xcode stuff again. Now you see the build succeeded. And now in onboarding UI, we want to create a new folder. And we will name this folder dependencies. In this dependencies folder, we will create a new file and call it container. Now we have to import factory. We will write an extension to the container and also import SwiftUI. We will add a variable screen after onboarding of the type factory any view. And we will write factory self and we will add a precondition failure. You have to register the dependency manually. Now, what we want to do is we want to go to modules and we want to go into reminder setup state because we want to add a new state, which is case onboarding finished. Now we will go into the reminder setup screen and we will add the new case which is dot onboarding finished and here we want to use the new variable. But first we have to import factory otherwise it won't work. And now we write add injected and in brackets we can write backslash dot screen after onboarding which are the variable we just created and variable screen after onboarding. I think we might can make this variable private too. I think this should work. It yeah, actually does. And we have to add this variable into our case. And now it should work again. Now we will go into reminder setup screen model and we want to create a private func and call it update view state to view state of the type reminder setup state. Actually, by doing this voiceover, I realized I should have put it in a private extension and not in a public extension because it makes no sense because it's a private func. But anyways, we are doing this because we have to update published variables in the main thread. Otherwise, you will get a purple warning which saying you have to update published variables in the main thread. So this is why we are doing it like this. And then in the case skip, we want to update the view state to onboarding finished. Now let me show you what happens if we run the app. It's loading, it's loading and it's loading. And you will see that our precondition failure hits because the dependency isn't registered yet. Let's fix this. In the folder dependencies, we want to create a new Swift file 
and call it dependencies. It will be a final class, dependencies, and we will also import factory. Well, and it has to be a public class because our onboarding target will use it. We can use it as singleton because why not? And we will add a public static let shared of the type dependencies, which is equal to dependencies. And we want to create a private init so nobody else can initialize it. Now we will create a public func and we will call it register. And register will take screen after onboarding of a type any view. And what we want to do is in this func we want to register it. So we will call container.shared.screen after onboarding dot register. And now we can register it here. And we just have to pass screen after onboarding. And we want to get rid of these warnings. And we also have to import SwiftUI because of any view. Now it's compiling again. And now what we have to do is to call this function. We want to call it in the onboarding package. And by the way, we can remove this to do because we don't need it anymore. In the public init, we will just call it. So we will call dependencies.shared.register and we will pass the screen after onboarding, which is in the configuration. And now we can build it again. We can remove this warning because it's annoying. Oh, I missed one. I have to do another one. And now we can cl click on continue and you can see onboarding finished. Now let's check, let's search for onboarding. No, not onboarded. Onboarding finished. And you can see this is the view which is passed from the actual Trimlex app. But there's one issue, there's a back button and we don't want a back button. Let's fix this. Now we will go into the reminder setup screen. In the case onboarding finished, we'll write screen after onboarding dot navigation bar back button hidden. And now it should work. And if you press skip, there is no back button. That's really nice. That's what we wanted. We hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. See you next time. Bye. Like the video if you liked the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Subscribe if you want to be notified on our future content. We are also on Instagram and Facebook. Feel free to follow us there as well. And have a great day. Start creating. Stop consuming.